Hey guys, my name is Moon, and welcome back for more I, the Somnium Files. So, last episode, we pretty much, I guess, finished another route, right? But, not technically finished, but it was locked, right? So, we need to go to another route again, and yeah, let's see what happens today. So, let us continue. Okay, so we were here last time. We finished this, and it was locked, I mean. Right, he told me and Date went here or to the factory, right? So uh, we will go here. Yes, this one. No, not this one. This one. Yes. Okay, so we're back to the sink. I think this sink was with Iris, right? Okay, let's let's fast forward uh, a little bit. Okay, so thank God this one. Yeah, this one is much more earlier. You know what I mean? Earlier CRT TV. is the different paths, I guess, is much more earlier. So last time we did a hit, right? So let's spin it, spin it now. Okay. What is this video? It is difficult to believe, but these are the faces of the victims of the original Cyclops killer. What? What is going on here? Iris, what are you hiding? We should continue. There are more objects to inspect now. Yeah, why is this in Iris's uh sink, right? So we got a torso, mirror, I guess we'll go with a torso here. A torso with a head. If it has a head, is it still called a torso? What would you call it? Okay, so I guess we'll choke it, right? Yeah, just like the one on the TV. Jesus, Iba. <laughs> Even my consciousness is being affected. While I was unconscious, the room changed. So we got another TV? I'm tired of this. We have no choice but to investigate. Okay, so new stuff is there's a head on the ground now. A table. Medicine bottle. A new Four TV. Minutes. Okay, let's check the TV again. An old television. So let's turn the dial, I guess. I don't want to waste my uh, what do you call this? My time for now. Another one. <coughs> Jesus Christ. So yeah, someone is watching. So that he has video showed the face of a victim of the original Cyclops killer. So he has an accomplice. It appeared to be the second victim. What is going on? Iris has something to do with the first Cyclops case? Unknown. I do not have enough information. Guess that means we have to investigate more. Indeed. The oil drum, shelf, and another torso have been added. Let's go. Okay, um, shelf? So it's been a week since I played, okay? So maybe I get my facts wrong. 
But if I remember correctly, we saw Rohan, right? Only a shelf. Was it last episode he was taking the eye of uh, Iris's uh, real mom, right? Okay, let's push this. Let's use. I don't know. Let's, let's hold it. Let's hold. Let's hold. That shelf sticking out. It seems odd. So I think it, it is it is Rohan that's doing this right now. Maybe. <sighs> okay, the ball is gonna fall on Ibis' head. What? What happened? A metal ball must have fallen off the shelf. Why would anyone put that there? Beat it to death. <laughs> what does that mean? An Three iron minutes, ball. Scott. It looks quite heavy. Um. Okay. We can, we're gonna use it now, so we can throw it. Balance on. I don't want to waste my time, though. I want to check the balance on. If, if Iba kicks this, he's not gonna kick this. I guess it's too heavy, right? So let's just throw it. Where should I throw it? Throw it that way. Understood. It is unexpectedly light. Oh, it is light. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay, what happened? I feel like that ball hit me in the head. Now, a TV and an old book have appeared. I hope this is the last time. Okay, so we got another TV. Let's go to it. Where is it? This one? Worn out reference book. Okay, so that's the other one. An old fashioned TV. Um, let's just turn the dial. My God. This was the third victim of the original Cyclops killer. Okay, so I said it might be Rohan. I'll just say maybe Ro I mean Rohan is most likely one of those two, right? One of those two, but the other one, it's hard to say. Why At least right now. Know that? There is a possibility that she saw it online or on TV. She even reproduced the circumstances of the killing. Would her imagination explain that? Date, we have no direct evidence. For now, we must continue investigating. Right. Okay, so we got a book here, right? Medicine bottle, locker. I guess we'll go straight for this one. It is a thick book. Um Okay, use this one first. We can read it. It has not been well preserved. Most of the ink has faded. Can you tell what kind of book it is? It is probably a book on butterflies? It looks like butterflies. Insects! Uh, it's insects. a book on insects! <laughs> Look at Iba's eyes. Don't get excited. I know how you love bugs. <sighs> Does this book belong to Iris? I didn't know she liked insects and to read the book so often that it wears out. Well, we can't prove it's Iris's. True. We cannot conclude anything. An illustrated reference book. Okay, so I guess let's just um rip it. This will be easy. It's more brittle than crumbly cheese. Oh, it disappeared. Melted down like a grilled cheese. Okay, nothing happened though. What? It did disappear, but nothing really happened. There's a gun there though. Medicine bottle? A drug bottle that holds. Chug it. Um. Okay, chug it, Iva. Do it. 
Do not pressure me, Date. Pressure you? Into drinking alcohol. Is it alcohol? Well, unknown. This is for an investigation. I'm ordering you to drink it. You are exploiting your position of power. I will set up a labor union. An AI labor union? Sounds dystopian. I won't drink it. Fine. Okay, I guess that's not it. You have less than two minutes, Date. Hurry. Yeah, let me check Just the locker. locker. Uh, listen, open. I guess we'll just open it. Yeah. Ah! Jesus Christ. Iba? It's alright. More importantly. Small ball. Ain't there a gun there, right? Okay. What is gonna happen here? Then, okay, it's gonna drop. Um. Okay, big boy. Big boy's gonna move. But it's so weird, though. This is in Iris's sink, right? I mean, if I remember correctly, that a lot of people or a lot of swapping is happening, right? between people so maybe okay jesus christ so maybe this is not iris's mind someone swapped into her maybe because this is this doesn't make sense right why would iris have this that is jesus oh my god Oh, it's Date. Wait, it's actually Date, though. Okay, so yeah. This is our D D Date, right? That is not his original body. It's kind of confirmed now, I guess. Like someone swapped with him. Probably why he doesn't have even memories of uh, six years. Or, uh, what do you call this? His only memories are from six years, right? Six years what ago. Happened in that somnium? Before that, he doesn't have any, right? So, this is, I guess, Date's body is the real killer's body, right? We saw it too. The four murdered women are without a doubt the victims of the original Cyclops serial killings. That means... The murders that occurred six years ago are these memory fragments that coalesced in this Somnium. No. That means the person who killed them was... Was you. Or at least the one who owns your body. Or the original owner, I guess. Okay, let's talk to... Uh, the boss first. How about the original Cyclops serial killings? Didn't I tell you? The entire case is a state secret. Why? No matter how many times you ask, I won't tell you anything. So how can we solve this? If you don't even want to tell us. The blue figure, or the blue figure, I mean, from the sink. Help me understand this. What I saw during the sink earlier, that was the scene of the original Cyclops serial killings, right? Yeah. So the person doing the killing was the original Cyclops killer. Right. Did you see him? He was... I saw... your face. The original Cyclops killer was... It can't you. be. That's impossible. Date, 
You cannot say that for certain. You have no memories past six years ago. So perhaps, Mr. Date, you are the killer. Mm. You're missing your left eye. So you steal them from others. I'm kidding. You can't be the Cyclops killer. Really? Of course not. Do you think I would hire a serial killer? Maybe. You interrogated Iris before the sink. What you saw in the Somnium was just a manifestation of the fear you put in her. So, what about the original Cyclops serial killings? Just tell us, honestly. The Cyclops killer appeared six years ago. I lost my memory six years ago. There has to be some kind of connection. There isn't. It's a coincidence. Really? Really. So why did the original Cyclops killer appear in Iris' Somnium? You can't dream of something you know nothing about. That means Iris must know about the killings. Six years ago, Iris was 12. Did she witness the crime at age 12? And not just one, but all four? Hmm... Maybe. Oh yeah, about the original and new incidents. I don't believe there's any meaningful connection. Between the original and new Cyclops serial killings, I mean. Because for the original one, it was... it was the right eye, right? And for the new one, it's the left eye. Why is that? The culprit is not the same. I am absolutely certain the original Cyclops killer could not have committed these crimes. How can you be so sure? Because I can. And back then, the ones that are the victims are all women. And now we have Renju, we got Shoko. So it was it's pretty much I guess random now. Or not random, but uh he chooses his victims now i guess for b back then it was all random women that the killer was killing don't worry about it just trust me it's the red figure and the sink in the somnium earlier i saw someone else who might be the criminal who was he i wouldn't know yeah we who would who would even know that though like there is no face why did the original Cyclops killer appear in Iris' Somnium? The Sinker does not always experience the Somnium they expect. Dreams are pieced together from memories, even repressed subconscious ones. When using the Sink machine for an investigation, we don't always see the memories we expect to see. True, oftentimes a subject will subconsciously want to express their dark secrets and repressed memories, that is why we see them so often in Somnia. And why those Somnia are so useful for criminal investigations. But this is not a guarantee. We cannot control the content of our dreams, after all. About the original Cyclops killer, Peter, tell me something. Remember what the boss said this morning. The original Cyclops killer has yet to be brought to justice. After the investigation got going, it was taken over by the government and classified. That was the last we heard anything about it. Of course, they paid lip service to the idea that the investigation was ongoing, but in reality, it was dropped completely. Hmm, okay. It's like I told you before. Dreams are pieced together from memories, even repressed subconscious ones. This can be expressed as an equation. Dream D equals memory A plus memory B plus memory C. This, of course, means that dream D is a fictional event. Wait, a fictional event in Iris's head? However, the same cannot necessarily be said about memory A, B, and C. Those happened in reality. In other words, 
Fiction is built from combinations of reality. So what I saw in Somnium earlier... Yes. I believe Iris actually witnessed those events. Okay. Is it possible though? Hmm. Are all the memories real? Pewter, you said that memories happen in reality, right? But what about false memories? How do we know if the memory really happened? Even false memories are built from the pieces of real ones. If you disassemble those pieces, you will find real events. What about things you see in movies or television? The events might be fictional, but the experience is not. Our imaginations are limited to what we have seen. We cannot invent something whole cloth. Okay, summarize for me. I didn't learn anything from speaking with the boss in Pewter. If anything, the mystery only grew deeper. Peter shook me from my thoughts. Dante, it looks like Iris is about to wake up. Got it. So I headed to the sink room. Okay, let's talk to Iris though. So is it possible? Iris saw all of his every single death? Jesus hey, Iris, Christ. About that dream earlier. Dream? What dream? There is no point in asking her, Date. The subject of a sink does not experience Somnium in the way that you do. They will not remember it. Then what about the Cyclops killer from six years ago? Cyclops killer? I remember hearing it on the news. But I was just a little girl. I don't remember anything specific. You don't? No. What about the scene of the murder? I don't know. I've never been there. But... Dreams are pieced together from memories, even repressed subconscious ones. You can't dream of something you know nothing about. Date, could you take Iris home? Huh? We do not have enough evidence to hold her. Even in Somnium, we couldn't find anything. The law demands that we release her. You cannot decline, Date. Okay, we got no choice. We need to return her or set her free. At least for now. Date, could we make a stop first? Sure. Where? Um, Oda? I mean, I guess maybe to Oda? Marble. It's a oh. bar in Golden Yokocho. Marble? You know about that place? Yeah, Mr. Okiura took me before. Why do you want to go there? There's something I want to talk about. We can't talk here? It might take a while. What do you okay. think? Okay. There's no reason to refuse. Besides, there's a lot I want to ask her, too. All right, sure. Trudeau, there's no reason to refuse. Iris nodded and pulled out her phone. Is she sending a Nile message to someone? I was curious, but I didn't want to pry. I turned the wheel and it drove to marble. Let us go to marble. Oh, Mama, yes, we're going to see Mama again. When we walked in, I didn't see Mama anywhere. Oh, but Oda is here. To my surprise, I saw Oda sitting at the counter. Tessa! Tessa. Oh, Ota. Look at Oda. He's like, why are you here? I only wanted Tessa. Okay, first time we're in this kind of POV, right? Or this view, I mean. We're always uh, on front of Mama here. Uh, where's Mama? Or right, let's talk to uh, Iris first. You called Oda here? No, I didn't tell him to come. He just showed up on his own. Are you sure? Okay, where is Mama, sir? Oh, she left a little while ago. 
she said something about going to help an acquaintance. She told me to watch the place until she got back. How well do you know Mama? Not at all. It's my first time here. I wasn't particularly surprised. Mama's always dependent on the kindness of strangers ever since she opened Marble. And isn't your phone broken? But yeah, that, that was the phone you bought, brought, uh, bought, no, bought. this is my new one. Yeah, the new one. You're thinking of the one I dropped in that puddle. I never thought I'd run into you here. I was niling with Tessa earlier. She said she was going to Marble, so... I got here just before you did. Look, I was really worried about her. She was about to be charged with a serious crime. Uh, what was that thing about? This actually works out nicely. I want to ask you something, Ota. It's about a Nile message you sent Iris. You said you wouldn't tell anyone about that thing. That you'd stay quiet no matter what. What were you talking about? Well, uh... I'll tell her about the two Witter thing. I swear I'll do it. Jeez, fine. Just don't tell anyone else, okay? Two but Witter. Before I tell you, who's that? Oh, he's lying again. What? Hell no. At no. At the door, someone's standing outside. He's gonna smack us again. Oh my stun gun, what the hell? Okay, let's see what kind of different it's gonna be today, or this time, right? We will see. Because they did this again, these two did that again. But instead of a pan, he had a stun gun this time. Hmm. When I woke up, I was lying on the sofa. Where am I? My head was killing me and my memory was foggy. I felt a sudden pain in my neck. I shut up, rubbing my neck. And when I looked over the counter, I saw a monster staring back at me. It took me a few seconds before I realized it was just mama. It looks like you're awake now. As Mama spoke to me, it all came rushing back. I remembered everything. Uh, what a time is it, Mama? It'll be 3 o'clock soon. In the morning, of course. 3 a.m.? Oh, why didn't you wake me up? I tried. You wouldn't budge. I thought you were passed out drunk, so I left you like that. But I didn't have a glass in front of me, right? So you weren't drunk? Didn't have a single drop. Oh, I thought you were drinking straight out of the bottle. Just like the old days. Where's Oda? Ota? The boy I asked to watch the bar? I'd say he's too old to be called a boy, but yeah. He was already gone when I came back. All I saw was you getting your beauty sleep on the floor. Damn it, Ota. What are you thinking? It appears that he took off with Iris. What were you doing during all this? My power was shut down due to the stun gun. I have rebooted in safe mode and am now operational. Oh, who's calling? The boss? Kajate, the boss is calling. It is the boss. Uh, how am I going to report this one? Date, listen. Stay calm, but this is an emergency. Okay, wait. <laughs> Did someone die? Just now, the killer... Well, just watch the video. I sent the address to Iba. Also, it's pretty much the same thing that happened. Iris... No, that's... The criminal
Sentinel is streaming this live. Iba, the source. Identify. The Okiura Fishery Cold Storage Warehouse, Koto District. Okiura? Date, focus. We need to get to the site, now. I think Mama and ran out of marble. Thank you, Mama. What's our ETA? Our destination is far from here. 20 minutes is the fastest. Please, please let me make it in time. The polar bear is back. Is Otis uh, as well going to be here? Tessa! Hold on! I'll save you! Okay. Ota! I kept my foot to the gas the whole time. I could feel the sweat on my palms. The engine raised a high pitch scream, but I could barely hear it. My heartbeat was pounding in my ears, shaking me to the core. How much time had passed? The feeling of time itself had disappeared. Eventually, the car reached a long bridge. Shortly after, the image changed. Okay. Oh, it is different this time. No, it can't be. It didn't auto no. stop this guy. Stop. Oh my no! god. Oh. Boy, it is different this time. Jesus Christ. Okay, turn it off. No! Hmm, very interesting that it's so different this time. Okay, moment of truth now. Let's go inside. Oh, wait, what? What happened? Yeah, re remove the mask then. It's Ota. Ota. Dude, what the hell is happening? Okay, I I'm confused. Did Iris actually die as well? There you are. Finally. I was looking all over for you. No, because when you went inside to the warehouse, right? Uh, Iris was at the back. I saw her body on the floor, but yeah, there was no blood. Or she and she was not, uh, what I call this, dismembered, I guess, right? It's rare to see you down like this, but it's understandable. You blame yourself for this, don't you? 
beating yourself up about taking Iris to marble, and about letting Ota get the upper hand on you. Am I right? Shall I tell you what Investigation HQ thinks? Ota Matsushita is a criminal stalker who committed murder-suicide. Ota had a selfish love for Iris. He was under the delusion that Iris loved him too. But Iris refused Ota. So Ota decided that he and Iris should be together in the afterlife, killed her, then killed himself. Oh, then Iris actually died. I mean, died as well. Okay. No, I thought, like, after when we saw Ota, I thought to myself, like, maybe this is fake, or like, Iris didn't die, right? But she actually died. That's ridiculous. Ota would never kill Iris. But the thing is, it is easy, though, to put uh, Ota in the bear costume, right? So it's most likely not how do you explain Ota. the other two murders? Iris's left eye was hollowed out. Just like Renju and Shoko. Those three murders were definitely executed by the same person. The new Cyclops killer. There's no way that's Ota. Too many pieces don't fit. Too many contradictions, like killing Iris. Such as? Okay, we're gonna talk. Um, Ota's behavior? Yeah. Stay away from Tessa! Ota showed himself on the stream. If he was gonna kill Iris and then himself, why would he do that? The only reason you would show yourself like that is to prove that you weren't the culprit. Ota and the polar bear on the screen at the same time would prove that they're not the same person. That behavior would be totally unnecessary if he was going to commit suicide anyway. Well, maybe he wasn't planning on dying at first. After he killed Iris, he realized that he couldn't live with himself. So he lies down on the workbench and turns on the ice cutting machine himself? I don't buy it. Hmm. Okay, Ota had no incentive to kill, to kill Renju. I mean, that is true though. Yeah, that is true. Maybe he was thinking like this. The reason Iris and I can't be together is because her agency prohibits it. Making the president, Renju, the ultimate bad guy in his mind. Mizuki is Ota's close friend. Do you really think Ota would kill his friend's father? And of course, Shoko as well. Right, why would Ota kill Shoko? Shoko was married to Renju. Maybe he was trying to get at Renju by killing her. That's a stretch. They've been divorced for years. Ota knows all about it. He wouldn't use Shoko to get to Renju. The culprit was wearing a polar bear costume, probably to hide their identity. But if murder-suicide was the plan, the costume served no purpose. There are some additional discrepancies. I analyzed the investigation report. Judging by his wound, Ota was stabbed in the side by a kitchen knife or something similar. Are you sure? I am. I told boss what Iba found. Oh, I know that. Well? Ota could have stabbed himself. Maybe he thought it would be a fatal wound, but... When it didn't work, he went for the ice-cutting machine. Then, shouldn't we have recovered the kitchen knife from the scene? Maybe he threw it in the ocean. Boss, come on. Ota goes out to the water, stabs himself in the gut, throws the knife over the side, then walks back to the warehouse? True, that is kind of impossible, though. Well, I wasn't being serious. I didn't think Ota was the culprit from the beginning. I was just playing devil's advocate for HQ. Really? Yes, really. Anyway, Ota didn't kill anyone, and he didn't kill himself. Here's what I think happened. Stay away from Tessa! Ota knew Iris was kidnapped, so he rushed onto the scene. That's when he saw the culprit wearing the polar bear costume. He tried to fight him off, but ended up being stabbed in the side. He was weakened and losing blood at the culprit's mercy. 
The culprit forced him into the costume, then under the ice cutting machine. And then... Then, who is the culprit? I wish I knew. We're up to four victims. But Ota was a special circumstance. He wasn't specifically targeted by the culprit. Right. And he was the only one to not have his eye pulled out. So let's focus on the three other victims. Shoko, Renju, and Iris. What connects these three? Connections. If you find a connection between the victims, you find a connection to the culprit. That's the theory of investigation, right? You think the new Cyclops killer is related to them somehow? Maybe, maybe not. But it's a good starting point. Okay, let's, uh, do this. Iris' mother, he told me. He told me and Renju are definitely linked. They were high school classmates. And she did say that she met Shoko twice. But I can't imagine she would kill Iris in such a gruesome way. No matter what the circumstances were, it seems impossible to me. Ota's mom, Mayumi? Mayumi had motive for killing Iris and Renju. Mayumi hated Iris, and she didn't think well of Lemnus Gate either. And since Renju is the president... Anyway, the weak point is Renju's ex-wife, Shoko. I can't imagine why Mayumi would kill her. True. And above no all connection. else, she would never harm her only son, let alone kill him. Yes. She loved her son a lot. Okay, Moma. Renju and Shoko were connected to the Kumakuras. But there's no connection to Iris. And yeah, Moma loved Tessa. He adored her. So that is impossible. Renju and Shoko's daughter, Mizuki. Mizuki has the strongest connections with all three victims. Shoko and Renju were her parents, and she was close friends with Iris. She was good friends with Ota, too. But that's why I could never believe Mizuki would kill all four of them. Thinking of her as a suspect is ridiculous. Okay, next. Connections or not connections? Congressman So Sejima. Renju, Shoko, and So. There is a connection between Renju and Shoko through the Kumakuras. But again, I can't see any clear link to Iris. I mean, I guess at this point, right? He doesn't know. Me. I know Renju and Shoko. And I'm connected to Iris. But I have an alibi. Aside from Shoko, there's no way I could have killed any of them. No, now that I think about it, Shoko too. I don't remember killing her. My memories from six years ago are missing, but I still have my memory of recent events. And if I start doubting myself now... Date, I can say without a doubt that there is zero possibility you are the new Cyclops killer. I have been working with you for years. I know better than anyone that you are innocent. I thought it over, boss. Of the people I know, I can't peg any of them as the murderer. And no leads to pursue? No. Then there's only one thing you can do. Continue your investigation. Do whatever it takes to get the culprit. To get justice for the victims. You're right. Got it, boss. Got it. Okay, we're gonna go back to our investigating ways. Let's go here first. But in this route, both of them died. The air conditioning wasn't running, but it was still cold. The temperature hadn't raised much at all. The cold air sunk into my skin, but the center of my body was burning hot. Can you actually check this, this forklift one? is old. It does not appear to be functional. It has not been moved in some time. Workbench? Right here. Iris and Ota were. I am sure you are already aware of Ota's time of death. Just before I arrived. About 3.30 in the morning. And the cause of death. 
Right, about that. Ota had a stab wound from a kitchen knife in his side. Correct. What was the exact cause of death? Was it the knife wound, or...? I cannot determine that. I can conclude that the knife wound was at least close to being fatal. Even if Ota was still alive on the workbench, he was certainly on the verge of death. If he weren't already extremely weak, we would expect to see more signs of struggle. Maybe Oda was trying to help Iris, jumping at the criminal. That led to a scuffle and Oda ended up with a knife wound in his side. He lost all his power to fight back. He was forcibly put inside the costume, then finally cut open by the ice cutting machine. But why? But why? Why did the culprit put the costume on Ota? Unknown. I mean, the, the killer could put blame on Ota then, right? Iris and Oda were sliced in two by this ice cutting machine. Iris's estimated time of death and cause of death have been confirmed. The video was not a recording. It was a live stream filmed in real time. Which means Iris's time of death is 3.20 a.m. Okay, next. Iris also had her left eye removed. Yeah. And like Renju and Shoko, Iris's left eyeball has not been recovered. Okay, what else? Equipment? A video camera and laptop. This is what the criminal used to stream. All of these items have been bought from pawn shops and thrift stores. It would be difficult to determine a suspect from them. I have logged into the Wi-Fi in this warehouse. Okiura Fishery Co. Ltd. is listed as the owner. However, I found the password written directly on the router. Anyone who saw it could have used it. I have done some research. As the name suggests, the company is owned by the Okiuras, the same Okiuras we know. Renju's father created the company. Another connection to Renju. No, actually. Currently, Okiura Fishery has nothing to do with Renju. The company has been managed by office representatives for the past 17 years after Renju's father died. Renju holds no shares and is not involved in the management. In short, Renju did not inherit the company from his father, and it was instead given to other persons. But it can't be a coincidence. It certainly is suspicious. Very suspicious. Date, we should get moving. Officers from the local jurisdiction are checking the warehouse thoroughly. We will not find anything of importance here. Yeah, you're right. You can ask CSI to inform you if they find anything. Alright. Is this Kagami, by the way? Any clues? Uh, no, nothing so far. I checked this place point by point, but didn't find nothing. Okay, let's go. I let them know, then left the warehouse. Okay, now we're gonna investigate the outside. When I left the warehouse, I saw Piotr. Piotr, what is he doing here? I mean, we know he's a traitor. He walked up to me while I was trying to work it out. Date, I have to talk to you about something. Huh? About the original Cyclops serial killings. Why this all of a sudden? Because I want you to solve this case, Mr. Date. I want you to find who did this and bring them to justice. So, if I can help you, even a little... Why didn't you say anything in Abyss? The boss was there. I couldn't speak openly in front of her. 
So, I decided to meet you here. All right. Let's hear it. Very suspicious. Earlier, I told you that I was completely certain the original Cyclops killer couldn't have committed these crimes. I am absolutely certain the original Cyclops killer could not have committed these crimes. Let me explain why. I'll start by telling you the identity of the Cyclops killer. Okay. Although, it's more accurate to say, killers. More than one? In the first series of killings, the culprit had an accomplice. One of them was born a murderous psychopath. The other is Rohan Kumakura, the previous chairman of the Kumakuras. Okay, so we were right. It was actually, it was really Rohan. At least one of them. They each had a role to play. The murderer committed the homicide, and Rohan removed the eyeball. So for Rohan, I guess it's just his obsession, right? With the eyes, because his right eye was messed up, right? And the other one was the one doing all the killings. Like Rohan was just there, I guess, to dispose of the body afterwards and take, I guess I'll say trophy for him. So who is the murder psychopath? He was born with a brain dysfunction. Due to damage to the posterior pituitary gland, he was unable to properly secrete oxytocin. Oxytocin is a peptide hormone linked to feelings of love, affection, and trust. Hmm. It is colloquially referred to as the love hormone. It causes a tranquilizing effect which improves mood and relieves stress. It is normally secreted when the body makes contact with an object of affection, such as an embrace or caress. I'm sure you know what this implies, but he was unable to feel love in the way that we do. However, he was able to experience a substitute. His brain was wired in such a way that allowed him to feel satisfaction through other means. Yes, and that satisfaction is... killing. Due to the unique idiosyncrasies of his brain, he was able to release large amounts of dopamine and endorphins by performing a certain action. What was it? Murder. Dopamine is a hormone linked to the reward system of the brain. The pleasant feeling attained through accomplishment is dopamine. Endorphins are a kind of brain narcotic. They dull pain and create a feeling of happiness. He got pleasure from killing people? It's slightly more complicated than that. Killing people was the only way he could get pleasure. He was 12 when he took his first life. That enlightened him to the pleasure of murder, which he would do again and again. So yeah, that I, I guess that first. Okay, let's let's, hear, let's talk to Peter first. Um, why did the Cyclops case get classified? That I don't know. The details of the original Cyclops serial killings case have become nebulous over time. Even the official investigation material contains nothing of value. I am unable to draw any conclusions from them. You really have no idea? If I did, I would tell you. How about Rohan? 18 years ago, Rohan took a woman's eye. She was already dead. He put his finger into her eye socket and gouged it out. The reason why was simple. He was fascinated by women's eyes. Their beauty stimulated his greed and his desire to possess them. He needed to have them, to make them his own. Driven by this instinctive impulse, he took the woman's eye. From then on, he acquired a grotesque obsession with the eyes of dead women. He was very particular about his need that the eye belonged to a deceased woman. But even being the head of a Yakuza gang, there weren't too many opportunities for him to indulge. His deepest, darkest desire went unfulfilled for years. However, he soon met his ideal partner, the aforementioned psychopath. The Cyclops killer would commit the murder 
and Rohan would take the eye. Thus, a mutually beneficial relationship was established. This was the origin of the Cyclops serial killings. At about the same time, you were assigned to Abyss. Summarize. But let me check this first. Um. Hmm. So it was it's Monaka who's definitely died first, right? Because she was killed by Sosujima's son. Okay, let's talk to uh, summarize. Summarize. The original Cyclops killer had an accomplice. There were two Cyclops killers. And one of them was the former chairman of the Kumakuras, Rohan Kumakura. Rohan committed suicide by jumping to his death one year ago. That means... Pewter, tell me this. One of the original killers is dead, I know that. But that means one remains. Who is he? After his fourth murder, he was arrested by the police. They actually picked him up on other charges. But, in any case, he is currently serving a life sentence in Fuchu Prison. Fuchu Prison? Yes. What's his name? In prison, he doesn't have a name. He is simply called Number 89. Number, Number 89. 89. I know who killed Shogun Adami. So, now you know why I said that. That the original Cyclops killer couldn't have committed these crimes. Because one is dead and the other is behind bars. Neither of them had the opportunity. Okay, I guess we'll just move. Let's go to the diner first. But yeah, are we, are we gonna get anything here? The place was silent. It was quiet. I felt like I could hear the floating dust. I stepped inside. I thought it was empty, but I saw a shadow in the corner of my eye. It was Mayumi. It was like watching a decaying old tree cling pathetically to the earth. Then her son died. About Oda. Oh, uh, she's not saying anything. And hey, this was just like back then, right? Yeah, she wasn't saying anything. This is your fault. I heard from the police. Because you didn't take care of Iris. My boy Ota got involved. Date, I looked into the investigation report. Mayumi confirmed Ota's body early this morning. I see. I'm sorry. I want to be alone right now. Did you not hear me? I said leave! I'm sorry. <gasps> Date, let's go. She is in no state to talk. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so Mizuki is here. Mizuki is curled up on the sofa. She looked like a small animal frightened by a predator. I mean, her friends died. About Okiura Fishery called Storage Warehouse. And she ain't saying anything about Oda. About Iris? Mizuki must know. About Iris and Ota. Of course. The news was distributed heavily across the internet. Not just in Japan, but worldwide. Three days ago, Mizuki discovered her mother's body. Two days ago, her father's. This morning, two of her best friends. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I just realized that, right? I kind of forgot, I mean. But mom and dad was pretty much uh, a day apart. First one was mom. And the next day was dad. Then she got the rest, a rest day, I guess, for the third day. And then in the fourth day, her friends died. 
it is completely understandable that she is at her mental limit. True, true. And she's, yeah, just a little girl, basically, and all of these things happen. Can I be left alone for a while? Are you okay? Yeah. She certainly didn't seem so, but I can't stay by her side forever. Iba, contact Abyss. See if they can get Mizuki a good counselor. Understood. Yeah, this is very, very traumatic. I mean... <laughs> when I visited the Sagan household, I found Itomi with a hollow look in her eyes. She let me in and asked me to sit on the sofa. I agreed and sat down. But after that, I couldn't say a single word. The heavy silence weighed on both of us. Iris was my everything. We always went everywhere together. Whether it was buying clothes or going to the movies or taking a walk or going shopping at the supermarket. When she was young, she would just hold one of my fingers. Her hand was too small to hold mine. Then it was two, then three. And finally she could hold my hand. But eventually, she left my hands altogether. She started crossing her arms, being independent. Even though she needed constant attention growing up. Her memories are a part of this room. And always will be. When she was a baby, she fell off that sofa and cried and cried. One day, she tore up her picture book all over the floor here. <laughs> Another time, she drew with crayons all over the window. <laughs> she painted my portrait on Mother's Day. Scratches on the floor, chipped plates, burn marks on the table, stains on the cushions. Everything you see. It all holds a memory of her. <laughs> but why? How about Oda? Oda was one of my students. I taught him in elementary school. Everyone is your student for some reason. <laughs> I heard it from the police. Oda tried to help Iris and ended up. I don't know what to say. He did. I have no words. <laughs> Can you think of any more information? Hey, tell me. My entire focus is on this case. Is there anything at all you can tell me? I don't know if this is important, but... No, please. Tell me. I may have told you this already. I met Renju's wife Shoko twice before. The first time at the wedding, the second time a month ago, that second time was in the waiting room of the prison. What? Prison? There's an acquaintance of mine from when we were younger. I visit them a few times a year. And by coincidence, I saw Shoko. I don't think she noticed me, but I recognized her as Renju's wife right away. She was there for the same reason I was, to visit one of the inmates. Do you know who? No, I don't. We didn't talk. Which prison? Fuchu Prison. In Tokyo. Fuchu, Fuchu. Prison. Prison? I'm sorry to have bothered you. I'll be going now. I don't know what to do. Thinking about her. Dante, please, you, you have to catch them. Please, please. Trust me. <laughs> I 
we're gonna have to go to marble. Are you okay, honey? Huh? About last night. Well, at three in the morning, anyway. You know about it? It's on every channel. You have the face of a ghost. Do you want a glass? I don't need a drink. I need information. Do you have anything? Well, let's see. I do have... I suppose you could call it intuition. Tell me. Okay, so let's just check our files for now. Persons, we don't have any updates, I guess. Appendixes. Endorphins. Is this actually real, though? Like, that's why we have serial killers, because there's something wrong. I mean, th there is something wrong with them, right? But it, in the brain, I mean. That's why they do that. Like, for a normal person, like, even if you just see someone or a dead body, they, so most people couldn't even handle it, right? I mean, imagine doing the things like this. He told me... Iba. She can move her hand here. It's funny her design though. Her design here when she was younger. She was 19, right? And now she's much older. It's pretty much the same. This changed her, her hair a little bit and her clothes. Like even Renju. Yeah, they didn't even make them younger. It's the same. Okay, so, yes, we will end our episode there for today. So, I guess the route was, at least in the beginning, was a little bit the same, right? And then... No, 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 I, it's the same because Iris and Oda did something to Dati again, right? When we, with what they did on the other routes. But this time, it was a stun gun, and both of them died this time. The other time, it was... Oda was still alive, and Iris was alive as well, right? But this one, or this route, both of them died. And then... What do you call this? Uh, Oda was getting, I guess... Getting framed, I suppose, right? Because he was wearing the costume this time. But we'll have to see. So, honestly, I think we're getting uh, closer and closer to the finish line here. Because, yeah, they're revealing pretty much uh, a lot of stuff now. And especially Rohan confirmed, I guess. It confirmed that he's one of the Cyclops killers, the serial killers, right? So, let's see what's going to happen in the next episode. Dot is going to continue his investigation and uh, let's see where we end up, right? So, we're going to continue this and do more of I, the Somnium Files, in the next one. So, I'll just see you then, guys. Bye-bye.